Welcome to Trading Lounge and the global indices starting with the S&P 500 on the daily chart. We're looking at wave three here with an A and a B and a C wave. In that C wave we're looking for one, two, three, four and five here for uh, this to finish off. If there's going to be a bigger bearish pattern then we would need to see more than five waves in this in this particular space here so anything below that then we can look at a bearish pattern but otherwise if this sets in as five waves then we'll look for a move to the uh, to the upside uh, just checking on the volume just on the um, uh, trading view website uh, thingy charting app here we can see over the last few days here we can see that the volume has dimin been diminishing day by day uh, here so the sellers are drying up in this so we're going to see a rally and we'll see probably see a little bit of volume come into this too normally you see that at the bottom of third wave so if we look at this as one two three four five here so we'll see some volume come in and uh, uh, that and I think you know just check on the e-minis as well on this yeah so the futures are the same as well so um, all good um, so we're seeing increasing volumes here so we're seeing increasing volume in the trend coming bar by bar here and now we're seeing decreasing volume so um, anyway volumes confirming price action um, so from B to C we're looking for five waves one and two and three and four and five in here so let's go to the intraday and check on that so we're on 20,000 ticks here uh, we're looking for something of this nature here <coughs> um, so first of all if we just take the top of the third wave and the bottom of the fourth wave here we can see that the 38 percent retracement level is in this particular space here so we'll just uh, pinpoint that we can also see the wave four here uh, of one lesser degree is in here so we could also use that space there as well the top of that because there will be supply at that wave four um, area there so um, that's sort of it in a bit of a nutshell we're going to take a closer look at this though because this can also be counted slightly different down here but having this count here puts it in line with stock which is kind of important um, but um, yeah I just want to show you another little count uh, in here that's also uh, valid and I'll have to work through that over the next few days so um, but that's our A wave our B wave and one two three four five down here so we'll start building in once we see our first um, impulse wave over here we need an impulse wave because we can use that as the trade part of the trade setup to manage the uh, the risk reward um, stop loss so just checking around okay so so over here on the 10,000 tick chart this is counted a little bit differently we've got the A the B it's possible that there's a wave two here i don't think that's the case but um just like to give everything equal weight to a point um so one and two in this case one and two to here then one and two and three four five so in this case we've got the third wave here the fourth wave here and the fifth wave here then the fourth wave and then the fifth then the fifth wave here so the interesting thing here though is that um is that the Russell has also can be viewed <clears throat> like this as well so it's not an isolated um, it's not an isolated event at this point okay so uh, I mean we're just gonna have to be patient anyway because you know you can see that I mean this from wave four here down to wave five here this leg here will be roughly the same size as wave one because the extensions in wave three you can see here quite clearly that we don't have a decent wave four here do we do you know so we're gonna have and you know it could be simple it could be complicated so um we still got there's still quite a lot of time before this actually bottoms out there's a whole process to it so anyway this is just an alternative count which we need to work through over the next uh next uh few sessions um but apart from that we can just dive into We'll go to 1,000 and then 100 just to 
and oops, I haven't updated this, sorry about that, but the lazy analyst, the lazy Aussie analyst. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we know that um, the wave four of one lesser degree is, and, and this one over here as well, but I'll just take this one, and we know that 38.2% is, is up here, up yonder here, so we can put that up there. Uh, could probably view this as an A and a B and a C. I can still see this has got here. This is a little wave one here and then another little wave one and two. So we still need, we still need, we still need this at least, you know. So just see how it sits on the midpoint 50 here. So there'll be some type because of this, there'll be some type of classic trading levels pattern here. And if that gets triggered, then you'll know that there's still more to the upside. If it doesn't get triggered, it'll be moving down at that point. Uh, so tomorrow we can look at this finishing, you know, it should be finished off in one way or another in the next session. Um, have a look at any news events uh, that are sort of coming into play. Um, we could look to trade this wave five down here, but I, I need to point out, depending on how high it goes, um, you know, we'd need to look at, um, you know, it would be roughly this length here. So it's not wherever it is. It's not a, <coughs> it's, it's something, you know, um, but it's not, it's not a, not a trend as such. Um, and this might get a bit more complicated uh, here. Sometimes it's a bit of a, these corrections are a bit of a fingerprint of the previous wave four here. So, you know, this was pretty simple. This is one, two, three, four, five, four, one and two, then one, two, three, four, five. This one here was just still a smaller version. So this one here should be 60% bigger than this one, you know, and this one obviously needs to be bigger than this one. And, you know, it's an expanding uh, ratio, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuss out about that too much. I'll just go to the 100 ticks in here and just check on this a little bit. Looks like it's just three. Oh no, we could use that, couldn't we? Let me just check on this bit. I have to check on the cash. One, two, three, four, five, the third, four, five. So that's all of one. That's that's one, two, three here. That's probably mm, <clears throat> doesn't look like five waves here. It looks like three waves at this point. Um, but this one here, uh, we can use. I mean, yeah. So this is like an A and a B and a C up here. It's not like five waves. So. The thing is, is what I'm just trying to sort of look at at the moment. I'll just, if I do the work here a little bit, we don't have to do it so much on the other ones. We can just understand it a bit here. So, I mean, I would like to call this one, two, three, four here, but there's quite a big overlap here on this. And this is really quite big for a wave four. I mean, it's okay-ish, but it's more like a B wave. So it's more like we've got this. Our first, if we started off conservatively, then this would be the way to <clears throat> to play it out here. So I'm just going to sort of help get the top in play here a little bit. And this would be wave one and two in here. So not a lot then this will be sort of some wave three in here and obviously the closing is going to get a bit skewed and all the rest of it but um so maybe we should get pushed up there so it should be something like this here I mean, the, the, this would be the conservative count, the A, the B, and the C here. The, <clears throat> the other way that this could play out is that we need to be careful, because wave fours are just tricky little suckers, is all of, if we had to expand it out a bit, then this would be, we'd just have to double it in size, and this would be it over here. So all of this, an A, B, C here, just for the A wave, and then the B wave, and then the C wave. So I'm not... It, you have to be very, I mean, it's okay. I mean, look, I would have traded along. If I saw that impulse wave here, which I said in the videos this morning, I think in the stock video, I mean, I would have been trading this long here, but just from 
just from 30 to 50 or to when the session stopped or whatever, you know, but that's it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I'd be very careful what I do in wave fours. Wave fours is where you lose the money uh, in this degree of structure. So you have to change your, uh, <clears throat> your, um, uh, trading strategies according to what wave you're in, of course, you know. So, yeah, look, that's the, sim that's the simple side of it, um, but um, it could get a bit more complex. And I've actually counted this a little bit different here, here yesterday, which actually worked out, which worked out, um, I still could have gone the other way, doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's still okay, it doesn't matter. Sorry, just talking to myself. Um, <clears throat> that's the trouble when there's no one to talk back to you. <laughs> you have to answer yourself. Um, okay, so um, that, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Let's have a look at the um, the other guys. So this is the NASDAQ here, and same thing here, the A wave, the B wave, and then one, two, three, four, five down here. This one counts better as being, I could probably move this across too, but so this, you can look for the 38.2% uh, in here as well. But when there's large numbers like this, that's what, that's what everybody's looking at. That's anybody long here, they're looking at, they're looking to get to there. So, um, yeah, it can go up to that point. It could go to here. It could go in anywhere between those two, really. That's the thing. Could be anywhere in that space. They've got overlapping wave structures here as well. I don't think it's going to be one and two and one and two. Could be, um, but yeah, with this this move to the downside is definitely not finished at this point. This this structure is not finished. You know, this unless we go into yeah. I mean that's possible too. They could go into a triangle pattern. So we could go. Um, I'll just use a thicker line here. An A and a B and a C and a D, and then an E wave here, <clears throat> an E wave, and then go up at that point, you know, so we're in a, basically in, in, in a triangle pattern. That's possible, I guess, that's the thing about wave fours, you know. Anyway, we're not trading this, so we're just gonna chill, um, but anyway, that's just interesting, another point uh, can be viewed at, but I don't think that's the case, but it doesn't hurt just to talk about it a little bit. Uh, the Russell, yes, this is a Russell, so we can look at it bearishly, we can look at it as one and two and three down here and four and then five down here. We can do that, um, but because it's a following stock, we know that it's weak, the banks have kind of got the same pattern to a point. Now, um, I just think it'll be dragged around with the, you know, with the bigger market, so um, I think yeah, but still, the thing is, you know, that alternative count that we had a look at with the S&P here, if I just come back to the S&P and go into that alternative count here for a moment of, um, it was on 10K tick here, so where we had this situation where, um, I'm just shooting the breeze here, so we had this wave four, then this wave five, then this wave four, and then this wave five here, and then we go up. So this this you know these two tops here is is the same over here as well so i've got this way four then a move down then this way four and then a move down so this is not isolated as i mentioned before it is it is in here <clears throat> so it's just one little caveat that we need to work through and i don't think that i've made any mistakes i'm i'm happy to be to be wrong and right and I try to take everything in the same stride so yeah it all looks pretty right sort of here so um, yeah you could short covering this gap here at the 180 or the 1800 on the CFD or futures contract and then we go over to the European markets and the DAX is you know, this is kind of like the S&P 500 it's a little bit different <clears throat> um, It's a little bit different, but, um, you know, because I could look at this as wave one here with an A and a B and a C for wave two here. That's possible. Um, and bring this down further. 
I should just make a note of that actually I'll just put that here just so I can keep an eye on it but the thing here <clears throat> the thing here is that I'm quite sure that we're in a wave four I know that you can put a top in the market here I can see the whole trend up in the in the in the DAX you can count it different ways it's just not clear so if it's something's not clear in Elliot well you can't use it you have to like find um you know you have to find something else tick other boxes you know um <clears throat> but the fact that it's working in three waves here this is in three waves this is in three waves i can get it out of here as well um <clears throat> and then the logical thing to do would be to tie it into the into the um the s p the count you know and that's what i've done so as wave one and two here and then we've looked at all of this as well one two three four and now we can see one two three four five down here a little bit of a little bit of an extra wave there i could probably find out where that comes from but um yeah so this is the wave four up here the 38.2 percent would be coming into this particular area here that's the 38 so it's a bit lower in this case it's at the 500 and 5 is the second strongest number so that's a nice sort of and it's hitting sort of the lower end of supply well supply starts supply starts on this high and this high is here because of this one and so that pushed that back down so this is going to do the same thing uh, here as well that's going this all of this block here so it'll probably be um it you know it was going it's going to try to reach there that's what it's going to do um it's just how it's going to do that um i'm just going to check on this got to find out where that little structure came from because i've got one extra little dude here i can't see off the can't, it's not jumping out at me unless I look at all of that as one, two, three, four, five. I, things get a bit squishy down the bottom. I know that or the top. Um, okay, it's a bit of a puzzle. Um, it does make a bit of a difference, but um, that looks like five waves here: one, two, three, four, five up here. So this is uh, this, and now this is a long trade here, by the way, because it's a classic trading levels pattern. It's this one here, where it doesn't drop below the level. So we start from the top and then work down. And then we've got five waves here as well, you know, that's um, there. So that will push, that will continue to push up. But that would be where it is at that point. And then you've got between 400 and 500, you've got all the levels in there. So you've got one, two and three, and then the midpoint 50, that's going to give you a hard time. And that's where the supply comes in, all these open and closes in here and here, capturing it between 450 and 4, 460 um, is where it's going to give you a hard time. And um, yeah, so uh, where was that? Um, I lost the plot there for a moment. Just check on this here again. Where is that? That's the 38 here. So yeah, five. So radio. Sorry about that. So I was wondering what that was doing floating up there. So so that's that. That's where that will go to. And then you can short it from there. But when you're in these situations here, when you're in corrections, just reduce your position size. So if you normally, it's always good to trade minimum three contracts, but you need an account size for that, you know. Because um, if you've got three contracts, it gives you more options to take a little bit of profit and, um, do you know, move around. If you've just got, you know, one contract or one sort of one lot in there, um ryan jones is quite good for um trading contracts if you read his book um, he's a mathematician i mean it's plenty of money management things but in terms of contracts if you're turning futures contracts or cfd contracts then um yeah ryan jones does uh his method is quite quite good um anyway that's that and then so we're basically seeing a bump and a drop that's the that's the story i'm not that interested in in any of this and this is a little bit too short to trade i mean it's okay for day traders but um uh it's this other leg that we want up this is this building this leg up here is the one that we need to um you know focus on that's the one that's the money shot um but we have to find the low first and things take longer than we expect them to so yeah um so over to the uk market so yeah the uk market is kind of interesting it's doing its own little thing we've got this here as wave one and two here 
I've got, had it as an A and a B as well, um, and then counted this up here. This could be counted in different ways here, but I've sort of settled into that for one and two, a nice third wave, fourth wave here. I don't know, I mean, I could also put the fourth wave over here. It's not like we've made a nice high over here or anything, you know. So I'll, I'll check that out a bit later. But the interesting thing here, though, is that... Um, it does look like from this high we've got some sort of A wave, B wave and C wave here. So we could very well um, just continue to move up here and it does look like we're getting a little five waves here, like one, two, three, four and five here. So this will be the fifth wave coming in here and then there'll be an A, B, C pattern coming back, you know, 50, 60% or whatever. And then a push up here again. So this would be the long trade over here for this. That should get you going at that point. <clears throat> I'm thinking this is the the A coming down here is the A wave, the B wave, and the C wave here. And this would be wave one here and two here and three and four and five down here. It's not the best five wave structure and things do get skewed around large numbers and you probably say 7650 is not a large number, but it's also very important for trading long here because um, because it's the, the bottom end of group two, so 65, 72, and 80. So I'll just clear this out of the way here. So all of this is minor group two. And the fact that it, if it drops here, out of it and then find support over here on this with a you know classic trading levels pattern if it finds support you know you need the arrival you need the reaction just wait for the first high right and then just let it do its thing and then if you can see it climbing back on here this is where you need to be interested in it in here you'll just lose money if you don't understand this you just get it you're going to get chopped up and this could be, you know, in a fractal, it could be very small, it could be very large, you know, spanning a year or more or six months or three months or, you know, if you're day trading, it could be a couple of minutes, all those sorts of things. But you need that 76.50 of support. If that's the case, then we'll end up here. So this is slightly different pattern than the other market. So I, because it's different, I could have it, easy, I could have it wrong, you know. So this may not be the top here. We may be into this situation here. We may end up um, having like some sort of A, B, C here for a B wave and then down for the C wave here and then up at that point. And then we'll have to put this wave four over here. <clears throat> so there's a few things that could play out here. Because it's just because we don't have a, you know, it, we just don't have a nice clean top here as a fifth wave, you know. So, yeah, I'm not really, I'm just talking about short-term trading in here. I'm just talking about ducking and diving and weaving, and that's something that you really need to do for yourself, you know. Um, my job is to find a reasonable trend, and I would feel safer if we could find this real trend in line with, you know, the DAX, the S&P 500, all of those sorts of things. But I know the FTSE, you know, does its own thing when it feels like it, you know. And um, that said, we're moving to the Australian market and, you know, the relationship between the FTSE and the uh, the, the, the SPY, the SPI, um, is quite close. So, yeah, we'll talk about this yesterday. There's a couple of ways to view all of this. Um, all I can say is that from this little low here, we have one and two here and then three and then four and then we're going up for you know going up for five waves here. So you'll just have to be a bit careful. So if you can view this as wave one here and two here, and then if you can view all of this as wave three here, and then there'll be wave four, and then there'll be wave five here. So anything above that, then you can be sort of bullish again at that point. You know, I don't know if that's the case um, because this will be one, two, three, four, five here. Um, I'll, don't know. Yeah, look, we should be going higher. Should be going higher because this little move here appears to be in three waves. So we should be taking out that top here. The other way to look at this, I've got this here. Um, also, as an A wave here, a B wave here. This is a bit of a long shot. Um, and I'm not that happy with it because, um, because it's a little bit big. But we could just just shooting the breeze here could look at this as wave one here and wave two here the reason i don't like it for is because the wave two is quite big um and then we would need to see wave three which would need to be a bit longer 
So there's not you know if if this top here after this one two here three four five anything above this top here, then we could look at this being a wave three up here. That would make a bit more sense at that point, and then a wave four, <clears throat> and then a wave five to the upside to make wave C up here. So taking it up into the sixty one point eight percent. So taking it up you know, in the 50-60%, whoops, 50-60% zone here. But, um, and any move, you know, you could only trade it up to the 100 and get out and then look for a classic trading levels pattern. So I don't know what this pattern is in the bigger picture because I can look at it as wave three. I could look at it as wave four here if it failed at the 100. If it found support on the 100, then I need to go to the A, the B and the C correction up here. And this kind of ties in, if I could just go back and use um, this over here, let's just go to the XMJ here for a moment. This triangle pattern, this is a daily chart here, this wave four here that we're talking about over the last week or two. Um, <clears throat> I could extend this out here, as I mentioned before, bringing the D wave here and the B wave here and those sorts of things here. Um, but I'm quite sure we're working in some sort of triangle pattern here. So it may be the case that we could even just have a low in here and that's the end of it, or we will end up having some little ABC in here and then drop here. Like, um, there's a couple of different ways to look at this here, actually, if I can just remove that now. So I could look at this here as an A, B, C, D and E in here as a triangle, another little triangle just for this. So basically a move up here and then a move down here. You know, that would be in line with the rest of the markets at this point. So a little triangle in here as, as the A, the B and the C wave here for the E wave, you know. On the materials sector front here, the uh, XXJ here, the banking sector. Um, the, the, the US banking sector needs to go up here a little bit and then it needs to come down and then it can fold up at that point. So I think the banking sector is like this as well. Um, so there is a little case here for one, two, three, four, five here, but there is a bit of overlap here. So we could also view it as an ABC for the A, the B and the C up here as well. But this move here is corrective. So that very well could stay in place here. But I know that we're not finished in global markets and even in the US banks, we need this and this, you know. So I know that we're not there yet. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I've been saying that since we've, been coming down here but all I can say is we just need to re we just need patience that's all we need so we just need to keep waiting until this is done here and um, yeah and so this you know this is also the finance sector we can look at it in that triangle pattern as well so we just have to be careful it's not ready yet and then we still need one more move down here as well now the move down here um, you know I, I'm not seeing five waves up here um, so it's looking a bit more, I mean, it's okay-ish. Um, I could probably look at this as one and two and then one and two here um, and then continue to climb up here, but I, I, I can't go there yet. Uh, I can say this, the next session will be, you know, to, to the upside. Um, if that's any help, you know, you, you, if you were betting on a horse, you need to be long here. Um, <clears throat> um, but we still should see some move later coming down now. Um, yeah. Anyway, we need to be over here. It may be a new low. It could be part of a triangle pattern or it could be a new low down here. I don't know, but we, we need some other move down here in line with the rest of the markets. And the Australian dollar will be the same as well. So um, it'll be, every, it's all the same. It's all the same. So I, I just can't see, I can't see a trend trade here with any sort of clarity. You know, I can tell you if the market's going up or down, but uh, how far it goes, I'm, I'm not sure. And what the count is, I'm not sure. So apologies about that. Alrighty, I'll leave it at that. Cheers.